My dad is a sole survivor of his family. When they got to Auschwitz, his mom helped one of the neighbors who had an infant. And because she had an infant in her arms, she was led to the gas chamber line. He lost his mother, his two sisters, his father, and his brother. When he was liberated, he was 18 years old and he weighed 68 pounds. He has been collecting these artifacts and then turning them into art over the last 50 years. It's like a window into a tortured soul. It's really the cathartic process and it's his way of dealing with his trauma. I had the opportunity when I was 17 to come here and meet Mel. And I remember it gave a personal touch. As a teacher and eventually a college professor, I made sure that all of my students uh, would come to this very sacred place. For a lot of kids, picking up a book or, or watching a documentary or seeing a film isn't enough. They, they have to touch, they have to feel, they have to ask questions. You know, a lot of students don't have the ability to go to Auschwitz. They don't have the ability to to see those movies or to own those books. And, and coming here brought history to life. What emotion can be felt through a phone or through a tablet or through a computer? You just can't get that digitally. You need it, you need it in person. You need museums, you need places like this. To have present and to have future, you gotta have history. So you gotta know where you came from. And you never wanna let go of history. The Institute for Historical Review put an advertisement in the Jerusalem Post and said if anybody can prove that Jews were gassed in gas chambers, turned into bars of soap, or that Anne Frank's diary was real, they were offering a $50,000 reward. My dad was so horrified, he wrote a letter to the editor. And because of that letter, the Institute started contacting him directly, saying, you prove that Jews are gassed in gas chambers. And he took the case, and he answered their award, and then they reneged on their bet. And so he dragged them into court under a breach of contract claim. And because of that breach of contract claim, the court made a ruling that the Holocaust is simply a fact and cannot be disputed in the United States. A branch was broken off my dad's tree, but he kept growing it. And you know, human life is really valuable. So we have to be very vigilant not to dehumanize anybody. To lose this would be losing a part of humanity and losing a part of history. And I, I hope that this incredible museum stays intact and that other teachers and students can have the same poignant feelings that I had 24 years ago and will keep coming back again and again and again.